Hi, I'm Dave from boyinaband.com, and welcome to day 3 of my 7 day song tutorial on trance music. Yesterday in day 2, I taught you how to make a powerful trance bass synth and a distorted acid lead synth. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make a gorgeous gated pad for our epic breakouts, as well as a bassy pad to really punch people in the stomach, in, in, a, in a good way. Okay, let's begin. We'll start with a gated pad. Right click and create a combinator, then name it gated pad. Then create an instance of Thor inside it. Initialize Thor and open it up with Show Programmer. I'll just add some notes so we can hear the pad now. I'll talk about the choice of notes once we've made the effect. Okay, so I've just put in the notes here. I'll just move them along to a new section and I'll move on our snare roll as well so we can just listen to our breakout on its own. There we go. So let's take a listen. Okay, doesn't sound much like a pad just yet, but we'll sort that out. The first oscillator should be a multi-oscillator. On the sawtooth setting, take an up an octave. Then detune it slightly on octave detune mode, which is the last one. Okay, this will be the high to mid end of the pad, which will make it sound lush. Now make sure you hit 2 and 3. So oscillators 2 and 3 going through into the signal chain. And second, we want a phase modulation oscillator. This oscillator plays two waveforms in series to make a more interesting sound, often adding fundamental frequencies that sound really cool. In this case, we want to scroll up 3 for the first one, and 3 for the second one. So we have something that's kind of like a formant. Then move the phase modulation to about 90 something like that. This acts as kind of a high pass filter. The closer it is to zero, the fewer frequencies are allowed through. Now take this up two octaves. This will be the highest, most piercing part of the sound, almost like a high harmonic of the pad. Third, we want another multi-oscillator, but this time we want it to be a square wave. Detune it slightly, and this will be the thick filling undertone of the pad. Now, in the mixer, turn the balance a bit closer to number 1 than 2. A high frequency from the phase mod shouldn't be too prominent. The first filter should be a state variable one. We're going to use this to emphasize a band of frequencies, which we are later going to modulate with the LFO. Turn the resonance up to about half, just to bring out that high end nicely and set it to peak mode. Now, run this through to filter 2 using, down here we've got these two arrows, turn it to the left arrow and you can see the signal chain follows through into filter 2. And then select this arrow here from filter 2 into the amp envelope to complete the signal chain. Drop down filter 2 and again select state variable. Filter 2 is going to remove the very high end of the frequencies of the pad so it's more powerful. Turn the frequency up to about 3 kilohertz, and that should do it. Turn the amp envelope sustain up to full so the effect doesn't lose any volume over time. Also, turn the release up to about 5 seconds. You shift if you need to be a bit more accurate, and this will just add a nice tail on the end to emulate reverb. Now, for the last filter, we're going to add a comb filter. This is an awesome filter that delays the sound and changes the delay times with the frequency knob. I'll just show you. Comb filter with the frequency knob and the feedback with the resonance. This can make some sweet, futuristic, really well textured sounds. Turn the frequency to about three quarters and the resonance to just below three quarters. And as you can hear, that's a nice kind of almost phasey sound. Again, we're going to modulate this to really texture the sound. Turn on the chorus at this point, and turn it up to a bit more wet than dry, just so it's nice and big. Now for that modulation, set both LFOs, LFO1 and LFO2, tempo sync on. Turn the rate of LFO1 to 7-4, which will be polyrhythmic to the beat, making it feel like it's modulating interestingly. And change LFO2 to 4-1. to so it modulates once every four bars, so that's more kind of pumping in time to the music. Now, in the modulation bus routing section, set LFO1 as the source, the destination, 
as filter one frequency and set the amount to about 60. Can you hear that? Modulating it already? Just a subtle kind of warping texture. And now LFO2, we're going to set to modulate filter 3 frequency by about 50. And you can really hear that one. Just makes it sound really heavenly and epic and gorgeous and lots of nice things. Next, we're going to make the pad feel bigger. Right click and create an M-Class Stereo Imager and just completely widen up both ends of this frequency spectrum, the low band and the high band. And that just widens it nicely by panning the pad as far left and far right as possible. Now we're going to emphasize the importer frequencies. Right click, create, M-Class Equalizer. Now turn on everything. This is going to be some pretty harsh EQing we're going to do. On the low shelf, we want to remove the very low end, as this will be where the bassy pad will be operating, and we don't want them to clash and muddy up the mix. Turn the gain and the Q right down. For Param 1, leave the frequency at about 900 Hz, and turn the gain up to about 12 decibels, right up there. And then the Q to just over a quarter, and that just widens it up a little bit. Now, this brings up those undertones nicely, as you can hear. For Param 2, Turn the frequency up to about 3.5 kHz. Shift if you want more control again. And turn the gain up to about 15 decibels, right up. Yeah, it's nice. And widen the Q to just over a quarter. Don't worry about the volume increase, by the way. We'll limit everything later, and that'll sort it all out. Now, gently boost the high end by about 4 decibels, just to brighten things up a little bit. Okay, and now for that limiting. Right click and create M-Class Maximizer, and just hit the formula seconds look ahead. That just brick wall limits everything, meaning nothing can go over the 0 decibel reference point and clip. So we've got the sound of the pad, now we want to gate it. As I said, it's a gated pad. It wouldn't be much of a gated pad if it wasn't gated. I should stop saying gated. Right click Thor, and create Matrix Pattern Sequencer. Hit Tab to look at the back. Set it to Bipolar Mode, to make it mentally unstable. And then drag the Curve CV output into the Amp Level input on Thor. While you're behind the matrix unit as well, get rid of the note CV and gate CV options as well, otherwise they'll interfere with the gating at a later point. Now back to the front, hit tab, set it to curve mode. Make a pattern by clicking at the top of the bars you want to play. To change the steps value, just use the arrows here by the steps. And then I'm going to change the resolution to 30 seconds as well. And that just speeds it up. Okay. So I'm just going to put in a pattern here quickly. To test out the gated pad, hit the run button and then play it. Nice. There's our gorgeous gated pad. Okay, let's take a look at those notes. As you can see, I've started out on the third. This is a pretty and powerful way to start the progression. The bass note is following the root note of the bass line tying the progression in with the rest of the song. The higher notes are where you can be a bit more creative, allowing for some pretty melodies. One thing I've done here, as you can see, I've used the semitone difference in the key where D and E flat are both in key to create some heart-wrenching melody. A little bit of painful dissonance from the tail of the sound going into the semitone below makes it sound beautiful in a painful way as you can hear there. Also notice how for the first three bass notes, the first high note is the same, and that just makes a kind of entrancing continuity, which drives the melody nicely. Okay, now onto the bassy pad. 